Yo, what's good everyone? I'm Alex, and this is my long-term review of one of the most underrated lenses in Sony's entire lineup. I'm talking about the 12 to 24 F4G Super Ultra Wide Zoom. I've had this lens for a few years now and it's been a core part of my kit and has traveled around the world with me. The first thing you'll notice about this lens is this lens cap. Let me try to find a regular. So this is a normal lens cap and this is the lens cap for the Sony 12 to 24 G. You can see just how big of a difference that is. This thing is so big, you could use it as like a bowl or something. But once you take the lens cap off, the lens itself is fairly compact. It's 4.62 inches long and weighs only 1.2 pounds. That's really light for a super ultra wide zoom that goes as wide as 12 millimeters. The weight is distributed fairly evenly and it's not front heavy at all. Speaking of the front, the lens hood doesn't come off and there's no filter thread on the inside of this lens due to the bulbous front element. You can also use 77 millimeter filters as a DIY hack. The construction of this lens is very solid with rubberized zoom and focusing rings. It is an internal zoom, which is always great to have. The body of this lens also features an AF MF switch as well as a customizable button. Sony claims this lens is dust and moisture resistant, but there's no rubber gasket on the back of this lens, which is really surprising. But even without this gasket, this lens fits very snugly onto my a7 III, and I've shot with this lens in all kinds of conditions, in rainstorms, blizzards, dripping wet under waterfalls, and if I know the weather is bad, I have full confidence that this lens is gonna perform. But even though this lens is pretty small for a super ultra wide zoom, don't be fooled by its size because optically this thing is incredible. All right, so let's start with the sharpness test. This is a brick wall shot at 12 millimeters. In the center crops, you can see that it's already sharp from F4. That's wide open for this lens. And it only gets a tad sharper at F8. By F22, diffraction sets in and it's noticeably softer. Now let's move on to the corner crops. The results here are pretty similar to the center crops with F4 and F8 being very close in sharpness and F22 being a lot softer. For a 12 millimeter shot taken on a full frame sensor, there's no loss of detail or smearing in the corners. And that just shows you the quality of this glass. Now let's move on to the 24 millimeter center crops. At F4, it's a bit soft but sharpens up a lot by F8. The corners have very similar performance with F8 being the prime spot of where you wanna keep your shots sharp. Here's a real world example of a shot taken at 12 millimeters F4. Let's zoom in onto that taxi cab on the left here and you can see just how crisp those letters are. You can even make out the detail in this man's beard. Here's another real world example taken at 24 millimeters at F4. You can make out the detail in the bricks and the air conditioning and even the people's faces. This is probably one of the sharpest super ultra wide zooms that I've ever used. But sharpness isn't everything and there are a few downsides to this lens which I'm gonna get into. Distortion is one of the negative aspects of this lens. There is noticeable barrel distortion on the wide end and you get some pin cushion distortion in the long end. There's also some vignetting and light fall off in the extreme corners. This is a real world example taken at 12 millimeters. This is another example taken at 24 millimeters. For a super ultra wide angle lens, you would expect fish eye like warping, but the distortion is actually very well controlled and easily correctable in post. Due to the bulbous front element, flaring can also be an issue depending on the type of shot and where the sun is. For example, in this shot, the sun is overhead causing small green flares near the light source. 
But in this next example, there's no flaring at all. Shooting straight into the sun for this sun star test produced ring flare around the entire frame. This is probably worst case scenario, but it's still something that can happen in your shots. Sun stars are pretty nice at f22, and they differ a bit from 12 millimeters to 24 millimeters. I love the color reproduction and accuracy of this lens. Just look at this shot of this graffiti wall. You can make out those subtle differences between the colors, and there's little to no post-processing here. Just look at the brilliance of the color in the water and the boats. If you buy this lens, you will not be disappointed in the performance. This lens is just so fun to shoot with. The kind of perspective that you can get with 12 millimeters is really unmatched. When I go on location, I try to take unique shots, whether it's finding a different composition, shooting at a different time of day. I don't wanna take that shot that everyone else has taken. And this lens really lets me be creative and really get those crazy angles and crazy perspectives that really not too many other people are able to capture. So it's a shame that most people go straight for the 16 and 35 G master and skip right over the 12 to 24 G because this is truly an underrated lens. And if you know how to use that super ultra wide angle focal length, there really isn't a substitute. And if you own this lens, or if you're thinking about buying it, please drop a comment down below because I've only met a handful of people who own this lens because it would be awesome to hear your thoughts and get your perspective on this hidden gem. So if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see similar content or support my channel, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.